What's up boys, it's Nick from Team Table 501 here. I'm the king of the scrubs and today I am bringing you a hero deck profile for July 2020 format. Now, normally at this point, you know, we would be right in the middle. I think we'd be nearing nationals, right? Because this is day one of Euro, yeah. So I think nationals would be nearing. I'd be testing for that event. Uh, but clearly we are currently stuck in a global pandemic, so that's not going to be happening anytime soon. And the reason that this is a hero deck profile and not a salad deck profile, I don't have the cards. Funny story, actually. Uh, right before the pandemic happened, I lent, I lent out my cards for people to play at regionals. And uh, those regionals never happened, and I have never been able to go and get my cards. So I needed to pick up a new deck, something that would be fun that I could play with my friends, you know, just casually hanging out. And I didn't want to play something as powerful as salad just because, like, for our playgroup, it's a little too strong. Or at least for the playgroup that they're used to, it was a little too strong. So I wanted to play something that, like, still could do a lot of board building, but also doesn't, you know, it's not it's not recurring its resources every turn. And I chose Hero. Um, <clears throat> now this deck is, is really interesting because, like, some of the boards it can end on are really, really powerful. Like, you can end on Dark Law, Dystopia, and then Honesty has backup to protect it. You can end on, like, Dystopia plus Absolute Zero, threaten to nuke your opponent's board. You can end on Dark Law, Ab Zero, threaten to banish your opponent's entire board. Uh, or sometimes all you can end on is an Absolute Zero. And you just have to hope that that's good enough. You know, the deck's been a ton of fun. I've had a blast playing it. You know, I think for the most part, this is a stock list. The side deck has a couple experimental things. You'll see that when we get to it. Anyway, as always, the link to the deck list is going to be in the description down below if you just want the deck list and don't want to hear me ramble for 15 minutes or however long this video is going to be. Uh, um, so without further ado, let's just get into it. So, uh, like I said, this is the hero deck profile. You know, I think for the most part, this is a pretty stock list. You know, very few things are, you know, I think for mo like for 35 of the 40 cards are pretty, like, mandatory. So three Stratos. Uh, this card's insane, obviously. Searching heroes, popping spells and traps. This card gives you a lot of flexibility in what you're able to do with your starting plays. Uh, two Shadow Mist. You're mostly using this to search heroes when it hits the graveyard, but in some iterations of your combos, you can summon this with uh, Liquid Soldier, search a mass change, and then you have a Dark Law ready to go on your opponent's turn. And then for the one of one Solid Soldier, this card is absolutely insane. The fact that you get to do both of its effects in one turn is absolutely ridiculous. If you're able to start your, your turn off by like activating Emergency Call to search this, and then you can summon this, summon Stratos, and search Ferris. You're just like in an insane position. One Liquid Soldier, letting you dig deeper into the deck and revive monsters back from the graveyard. This is really good turn two, allowing you to extend for OTKs. It's a really good normal summon if you're able to like resolve like Fusion Destiny and a hero lives before you have to normal. You can search this with Shadow Mist. It's really, really strong. And then one Honest Neos. You mostly search this at the end of your turn, or near the end of your turn, with a Cross Crusader. So that whatever fusion you make is protected. This also works well with Dystopia. Basically giving you two pops before um, Fusion Destiny goes away. Or before it dies to Fusion Destiny. So that's really powerful. So that's it for the Elemental Heroes. On to the Vision Heroes. Uh, three Ferris. This card is absolutely insane. You know, this is the only reason the deck is at all playable. Uh, this is also Prime Hand Trap Bait. If any card in the deck is ever going to get hand trapped, it's going to be this card. And then to increase, this is one of the few Garnets in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! that you just have to play two of in your deck. Uh, drawing this card is so detrimental. It doesn't do, like, the only good thing about drawing this card is that it's a Dark Vision Hero. So, like, you can pitch it to summon Ferris, you can uh, summon it and turn it into a Dark Law. That's about the only good thing about drawing this thing. But you have to play two of it, because it's the only Vision Hero that works with Ferris that starts plays. And then the Vision Hero you're summoning off of Increases Vion. This card's really, really powerful, obviously. We know this from Goki format. Dumping Malicious, summoning Malicious, you got Free Link 2 there. This searches Polymerization, so it gives you another extender to work with. This card's very good. It also is a starter card as well, because you can Normal Summon it and send Mally, and that's almost your full combo right there. So this card's very, very good. And then for the Destiny Heroes, two Malicious. This card will never be at three again. Uh, one Dynatag and one Celestial. So the Malicious is very obvious. We don't need to talk about that. These are the heroes I'm playing for Fusion Destiny. Uh, Dynatag lets, uh, lets you give Dystopia the attack it needs to pop a card. And then Celestial uh, actually has a really funny on-field effect, which is 
to blow up a spell, a spell card when it attacks. So I've act, I actually was playing a game once with my buddy. He was playing a Sky Striker. He had a mine on board. And I hard drew Celestial. So I went normal Celestial, attack, pop your Mystic Mine, which is really funny. But you're mostly just using it because it's a level 4 Destiny hero with 1600 attack. Dystopia will burn them for the 1600. And uh, if for some reason you end up running out of cards, it has a graveyard effect. That usually never matters. So you just need to play any level 4 Destiny hero with 1600 attack. You know, you, I tried Decider, that one was fine. I tried Draw Hand, that one was really bad. But, like, just any one of them will do. So, if you wanted to make cuts for the deck and play going second hero, you would cut the Destiny Heroes and the Fusion Destiny. That's five cards you get to work with, so. Uh, and then the one of Dusted Gold, this allows you to kill your opponent on turn two with uh, Malicious Bane. So that's it for the monsters. Onto the spell cards. One hero lives, one Rota, three emergency call. You know, I'm just trying to max out on my consistency cards. I want to see Ferris every game. So basically, you have 8 copies of Stratos and 3 copies of Ferris. That's effectively 11 copies of Ferris. So you're very likely to open it. <coughs> um, of course, this card's really strong because it's not once per turn. You can just open 2 of it and you can, like, really do powerful plays. Uh, Rota and a Hero Lives don't have that deep of a summoning pool. You know, Hero Lives can only summon 7 monsters in the entire deck. Rota can only search, like, 10. But these are just super important for allowing you to, uh, to have more copies of Stratos in the deck so that you can find Ferris. And of course, these can obviously flex into different monsters. You know, if you need to search Honest Neos, this can get Honest Neos. If you need to get, like, Liquid Soldier to revive a guy, this can get Liquid Soldier. And then three Fusion Destiny. This card's absolutely broken. Like, almost any card in Yu-Gi-Oh! that lets you use materials in your main deck is automatically just one of the most powerful cards, like, in the game. So this thing is ridiculous. Its restriction is a little bit annoying. You can only summon darks after you activate it, but that's the thing. You can only summon darks after you activate it. You're never going to activate this as your first card for turn unless your hand is garbage. So it, this card works as a starter card. It works as an extender card. It also works as a recovery card, letting you make either Dystopia to help part to help you break apart a board, or it can make another card in the extra deck to flex into Dark Law or Anki to help you push for damage or, again, break a board. So this card is just absolutely insane. But again, if you wanted to play a going second hero build, I wouldn't recommend that, though. You would cut this card, because it doesn't do enough. And then three mass change. I don't understand why people are only playing two of this card in some lists that I've seen. You absolutely want to draw this card every single game. You know, Dark Law is by far one of the most powerful cards in your entire deck, so why would you not give yourself the, the best chance of summoning it to the board? <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> and um, this helps you dodge a targeted negation, you know, stuff like Impermanence and Valor. Uh, by flexing into Blast and Dark Law and stuff like that, so this card is very, very powerful. And then for the f the searchable fusion spells, uh, one Polymerization, one Dark Calling, one Miracle Fusion. Do not play more than one of each of these. I've seen lists doing it, all because like, oh, I have bad luck. I always draw a Miracle Fusion. It's a brick. Uh, these cards are very rarely bricks. I would say out of the three, Dark Calling is usually the biggest brick because you're using this card to kill your opponent. But even if you open it, it still just is a fusion spell. So, like, opening it's never the worst thing. These two opening is not really that bad. You know, sometimes you'll open Miracle Fusion, and they'll, like, negate your Ferris, and you'll just never end up with a card in the graveyard, and you'll never activate it, and it's dead in your hand. Uh, but Polymerization is very rarely dead in your hand, for the most part. It's only bad if you don't draw monsters. And if you're not drawing monsters, you're losing the game anyway. So, but as I was saying, you only want to play one of these. They're all searchable through different effects in the deck. You don't really want to ever see the second copy, especially because Wonder Driver lets you reset these cards. And then for the trap cards, three impermanence, only hand trap in the deck. Uh, it's a defensive card going first, it's a hand trap going second, and then uh, three judgment. Like I said, I'm playing the going first build of this deck, so I want cards that back up my board. <laughs> uh, because, you know, Hero is really good at just, like, picking apart random random boards and like it's very good at setting up just like a massive floodgate with a pop and like you'll have a length that generated you a, a card in advantage you usually have an honesty as backup but you're really weak to cards like lightning storm and evenly matched um or even uh even something like a dark ruler no more sometimes can just like break your board so having a card like judgment that is just super flexible and the fact that it can negate those board breaking part board breaking cards or it can negate the starter cards out of your opponent's deck. Super, super important. So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards. Onto the extra deck. Uh, Rick and Morty Field Center, 400 IQ Gang. 
two Dark Law. You, you want to play two in this deck. You want to be able to turn your Dark Law into a Dark Law if the first one gets hit with like an Impermanence or something. One Acid for breaking uh, for uh, destroying back row, and it's good with the Absolute Zero because it blows up the opponent's entire board. One Anki. Uh, this card's probably the least summon card out of the extra deck, just because like you're never really finding yourself in a situation where you want to summon it. It's only really good if your opponent has like a, a field full of monsters that you just like can't kill for some reason, which is very rare in this deck. Um, or like if they have a bunch of just like small monsters, you can like summon Anki, attack into one, get a mass change, mass change this into Dark Law, kill another card, uh, and then blast. This is mostly here to uh, use mass change on Stratos when Stratos gets hit with a hand trap. Uh, but sometimes you just make this card because it is really strong. You know, you can half a monster's attack points and bounce set cards. I believe it's set cards. Oh no, it can bounce any spell or trap. So yeah, this card's just really, really good. So that's it for the Masked Heroes. For the Elemental Heroes, I'm playing one Absolute Zero and one Sunrise. Absolute Zero is super critical because it basically threatens to blow up your opponent's entire board if they ever if they ever deal with it. And Sunrise searches Miracle Fusion and is removal. <laughs> for the Fusion Destiny monsters, I'm playing one Dystopia and one Dangerous. Dystopia is the card that lets you pop a card on either player's turn if you change its attack, which you do with Dynatag. Uh, Dangerous is really, really bad for the most part. The only reason you're playing it is that uh, it allows you to flex Fusion Destiny into a one-card Dark Law, which is sometimes really important if your hand is really bad. Uh, but yeah, this card you basically never make. Uh, it does have a neat effect, though, where, like, you discard a card, or you, like, discard a Destiny Hero, and then you get to... Or no, you discard a card, and then you send a Destiny Hero from your deck to your graveyard, and then uh, all your monsters gain 200 attack for every Destiny Hero in the graveyard. That never comes up. Again, you're mostly using this to get into Dark, to dark Law if your opening hand is really bad. Or, like, if you draw Fusion Destiny and you already burned the Dystopia and you need another monster, you can make this. If you wanted to cut a card out of the extra deck, Dangerous is probably the card you can most easily cut. And then one Trinity. Uh, you can make this on turn two uh, in combination with... Um, or with the polymerization, usually you'll activate it turn one, you'll set it with Wonder Driver, and then turn two, you'll make a, a Trinity with it. Uh, this card just like attacks twice, can't attack directly, has 5,000 attack. Yeah. And then uh, Malicious Bane. This card is broken as hell. <laughs> uh, it can't die by Battle or card effects, it blows up the opponent's entire board, it gains attack. This card's really, really powerful. And then for the Link Monsters, I'm playing two Cross Crusader. Uh, this is by far probably the most powerful card in the extra deck next to Bane. Uh, letting you summon a D hero and then flex it into any other hero is super good. Um, the fact that it just, like, gets you free advantage for no reason is, is really powerful. And it's a dark, so you can mass change it into Dark Law. Uh, Wonder Driver, this is my favorite card in the extra deck because it lets you reuse mass change. And I love using mass change. So, oh uh, yeah, whenever you summon a fusion monster to the zone it points to, you get to set a fusion spell out of your graveyard. And then if they kill it, you get to summon a hero out of your hand. That basically never matters. You're mostly using this to reset mass change, because usually what you'll do is you'll summon the or you'll you'll do the liquid soldier combo, summon Shadow Mist, make Dark Law immediately. This will reset the mass change. And then you can summon Sunrise, get Miracle Fusion, and then you can threaten to either turn the Dark Law into a Dark Law or banish their entire board. That's really good. Uh, and then Dread Decimator. Uh lets you get uh, this has piercing and it gives your guys attack. So you're mostly using this if your opponent like gums up the board. Uh, so you can just, like, get the piercing damage through. Or, like, they're playing something like Goki, where all their monsters, like, float all the time. And Goki Guts is instructable by battle, and they're doing stuff like that. Oh, uh, but yeah. You're, you're never summoning Decimator, really, unless you, like, need to get through a defense position monster. And usually you can just destroy it before you have to worry about that. So, anyway, that's it for the extra deck. Onto the side deck. Like I said, a lot of random nonsense is going on here. But, for the most part, I think these are just really good cards that should be in your side deck. Or you can at least consider. Uh, one Pankratops and one Mind Control. These are just generic cards going second to let you break apart random boards. Uh, for combo decks, three Dark Ruler no more because we're trying to not lose to Borlot Savage Herald. Uh, I don't like playing against that board. It's not very fun. So I'd, I would like to play Yu-Gi-Oh! That's what I sat at the table to do. Uh, three Mystic Mind. I hate this card with a burning passion. Like, I wish it would just be banned by now, but that's not the point here. So the reason it's in this deck is because... Uh, against a lot of other rogue decks, our side deck cards don't really affect them a lot, you know? Like, some combo decks just don't really build up a big negate board like this. It just builds up a big, uh, it's like a big board of advantage, where, like, everything got you a card on the way to your board. You have a little bit of disruption, but you don't have, like, 
Appaloosa's four negates, Savage's negate, Herald's negate. Uh, you don't have Christron, Halka, Fibrax into Desert Locust into Discard a Card or IP into Nonsense. You get, you get, the, you get the idea, right? So the point of mine is to basically shut down your opponent going second so that they just don't kill you. Also against other OTK decks, uh, you can board this in and they just don't kill you. So. Then uh, three Cosmic, mostly for Eldritch and back row decks, just being able to clear away the important cards. Uh, outing Floodgates is super important because this deck actually has a hard time playing through some Floodgates. You know, stuff like Ravelry isn't that bad because all your cards are Warriors. But you know, stuff like Gozen is really difficult because all the fusions are different attributes. Uh, sometimes you lose to a Mystic Mine, you want to have a Mystic Mine out. Uh, even against something like Salamangre, you want to hit the Will, they can't extend, hit the Traps. Uh, and then three evenly, again, we're trying to break the combo decks board going second. This is also good against a bunch of back row decks because you're just forcing them to interact at a really inopportune time. Uh, and then one red reboot because I want to kill my Altergeist opponent. And uh, broken cards that are limited are probably supposed to be in your deck. So that does it for the deck profile, guys. Uh, like I said, this deck's been a ton of fun to play. I've just been having a lot of fun messing around with it, you know. I wanted to, I wanted to play a deck that would... That would, like, my friends would be <laughs> willing to play with me, but also something that, like, isn't, you know, some powerful meta deck. Just, like, something that, like, people can interact with, but if you don't interact with it, it's not going to, like, make a 12 negate board and hand loop you for six. And even if you have to play, like, even if you get paired up against a meta deck, you're not totally out of the water with something like this. You know, you have Dark Law, which says to your opponent, you know, this card still just, this card still just, like, fucks over every meta deck. You know, Synchro Eldritch needs the Graveyard, Ad Emancipator needs the Graveyard. Uh, even stuff like Salad and Guard Dragon combo decks and stuff, they need their Graveyard to function. So, you know, if you can set up Dark Law Dystopia with a Judgment, you're, you're probably going to win those games. So, but anyway, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of the deck profile in the comment section down below. The deck list will be in the description along with my Facebook and Twitter. Go follow me, friend me, I post cool shit. And that's going to do it. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Nick from Table 501 and get good scrubs. I'll see you next time.